let me try to respond to the question about the difference between um, valid critique and anti-Semitism. First of all, on a principle level, of course, it's very stupid to say that every critique on Israel is anti-Semitic. That would be, uh, like, you know, a logical fallacy. It will, it will be to say that it, it will be similar to say that every critique on a person who, who happened to be uh, 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 black is immediately racism. You know, like that. If you think like that, me, me, like you know, and I'm and I'm pointing out to people who are listening. If you think that every that that we are not allowed to criticize each other because that would be racism or sexism or whatever, then you are already embedded in this kind of um, identity politics, which I'm a big resist. I have a big resistance and of opposition to. I think that you know, like on the level of ideas, we should have the ability to converse, in regardless to our. Uh, I, our own identity, we are allowed to converse and to think and to criticize people from different uh, identity groups and people from different ethnicities, ethnicities and citizenship. Now, now I think that the critique and the anti-Semitic sentiments that I feel comes from what I will call the what we could categorize as the decolonialization discourse. And not everybody who criticizes Israel believes in that kind of perspective or stand behind this kind of perspective. So let's do it shortly. What is this decolonization perspective? So this is a stream of thoughts that you can kind of generally categorize that emerge from postmodernism. It's also emerged primarily in the US and it comes to criticize the colonial sins of the West. So, and again, I'm, I'm saying it in a very, very simplified manner, you know, but that could be a good entry. So decolonialization, you know, a, a stream of thoughts that is looking for power imbalances and looking for to, to expose colonial thinking and et cetera, et cetera. And one term, that uh, is embedded in this stream of thought is the term settler colonialism that is to describe the act of an imperial force to <clears throat> send settlers into a new territory to colonize the territory to ethnically change the the the, the balances and to exploit the indigenous people and to to benefit the the, the imperial power, no, of the land, yes. Now, you can, you can um, apply this discourse on the establishment of Israel, but you will have to do certain uh, um, intellectual fallacies in order to really look at the situation like this. Now, if I'm trying to still man this position and kind of say, so you can look at, the, the Zionist is a European colonial movement that has arrived to the state of Palestine and through means of power and colonial and, and imperial support of the British people, they've managed to overthrow the local population. And since 48, they have uh, built up a colonial a settler colonial state called Israel and they are occupying and um, the indigenous Palestinians. So that would be kind of in short, the decolonization narrative, which for me is anti-Semitic. <laughs> and that would be for me the boundary between a legitimate criticism on Israel and an illegitimate criticism on Israel. And why is it legitimate and illegitimate? And maybe I should also uh, unpack why do I think it's anti-Semitic? I don't know. Uh, I, I guess that would be a necessary step. But um, in, in principle, as long as you see, as long as you agree that the Jewish people deserve the right for self-determination in their historically indigenous land, then we are in a place that you have the freedom to criticize Israel because in your base belief, you still think that Israel should exist. 
And then we can talk about the two state solutions and we can talk about many things. But if you come from the decolonialization discourse, in principle, you think that the establishment of Israel is criminal, is a criminal act. And you don't believe that the state of Israel should exist. And, and the problem with that way of thinking, and that's why I think it's anti-Semitic in its core, is first, it's really inaccurate historically. And second, it gives permission for violence that is directed towards Jews, not towards Israelis at the end of the day. Hence, you could have seen, you know, like students, American students shouting, we want Jewish genocide, <laughs> you know, <laughs> quite curious days. So, so this is the boundaries. And now, and now, like, why would I say that it's inaccurate uh, 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 historically? Because, you know, like the, the Zionist movement was not a movement that was supported by imperial forces. On the opposite, it was the Jewish population in Israel. At a certain moment, they initiate a very bloody uh, resistance against the imperial power of Britain. If you want to see more precious and insightful moments, make sure to check our short clips playlist. To see longer interviews, check out the full episode playlist just below it. And to be notified for all future videos, click the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell. See you on the next episode.